and welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. Today, as usual, we're going to take a look at the broader markets. We are continuing to see sector rotation shaping up. Also, some key economic data was released last week. We'll get into that. And then beyond, we want to see where that relative outperformance is shaping up, as always, with an eye toward helping you uncover those areas. And then, of course, those individual stocks that can go on to outperform the broader market. So let's go ahead and start with some of that data last week. We did see durable goods orders. They perked up a bit in February. That's an area that's been a little bit weak. And we also did get fourth quarter GDP data, and it came in stronger than expected. So we are seeing a continued bubbling up of strength within the economy. Most impactful may be Friday. That would be today when the markets were closed. We did get core PCE data. This is the inflation data that the Federal Reserve pays quite close attention to, and it did increase. Now, that core number strips out food and energy, and Powell and others were on the lookout for that number to show an increase in inflation. However, the markets may be unsettled by that. We'll go ahead and, of course, see how the response is going into next week. Also next week, we are going to get the employment data for the month of March on Wednesday with private data and then later in the week, broader employment numbers. And in the past, this has been impactful quite simply because, again, the Federal Reserve is on the lookout for the economy to remain tame. They don't want to see GDP coming in strong, employment numbers showing strength in that area. So it will be very interesting next week, again, relative to the response to that particular data. So let's go ahead and take a look at these broader markets. And here we are with a view of the S&P 500. And the broader markets were up a little less than a half of a percent last week. It was rather quiet during that holiday shortened period. And the broader markets did remain in an uptrend with that S&P up above that 10-day simple moving average with your RSI and your MACD in positive territory. NASDAQ did pull back a little, about 0.3%, so nothing big by way of percent changes in these broader markets, but there is movement beneath the surface. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 11 underlying sectors in the S&P 500, as usual. We're looking at a two-month chart of those sectors, and it is a daily chart. I've sorted it by RSI, that relative strength. And let's take a look. We can see energy up here at the forefront again this week, up 2.2% materials, financials, and industrials. And each of these areas are cyclical. They are areas that will fare well as interest rates are due to decline and with the economy continuing to show some nice growth. Moving through, taking a look at some of these weaker areas, take a look. Technology, now it has been languishing, but to see it in this lower right quartile, this is your weakest area. Let's take a look at a daily price chart of tech, and you'll see this relative weakness that we've been experiencing in the broader index here, or certainly in this sector view, the, was the worst performing sector last week. Now, certainly we are due a pullback of sorts, but from here, as we progress through our show today, I will share with you where the strength is relative to this general week that we're seeing in the broader tech industry group. From here, let's go ahead and take a look at some other areas that sprung to life a bit last week. First up here is the healthcare sector, XLV. 
up a little more than one and a half percent. Nice resumption of that uptrend shaping up. We can see this MACD black line up through the red indicating a new uptrend. And this is really what you want to see. You have these strong groups that excel. And in essence, they need a period of consolidation before potentially experiencing another leg up. Also of note last week was a continued move. We talked about financials and you can see that we had this nice one week base breakout. We're going to get into that and a lot more as we progress. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at a more refined view of the markets. We're going to use ETFs to get a better feel for where that rotation is taking place. So up here again, two month daily price chart view. And with that relative strength indicator, let's take a look at an area that is newer up to this stronger forefront area. And that's going to be small caps up 2.6% nice rally. And we can see this nice MACD crossover and this positive RSI. I'm going to share with you a couple of small cap names that are looking quite interesting amid base breakouts. And as we look further beneath the hood, we can see that retail remains up here at the forefront. 2.3% gain. Nice breakout here on that retail group. I know that with my MEM Edge report, we have several retailers that are on the move higher, but I am going to also today share with you a couple of small cap retailers. So you're getting that push with both of those areas and the wind behind those names. Now, taking a look at healthcare, I talked about that area moving forward. Here's in medical devices ETF IHI moving higher and then again that nice MACD crossover so this is what you're going to want to be on the lookout for when looking beneath the surface for where that relative strength is beginning to formulate KRE I mentioned financials this is the regional banking ETF and we've been in a tight trading range for two months now. We did turn bullish here on the KRE ETF now above these moving averages, but we're not seeing a lot of momentum. Of note within that small cap Russell 2000 index that we looked at that was up over two and a half percent, about 17 percent of that small cap Russell is comprised of bank stocks. So that's one area or one reason that we are seeing strength there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these weaker areas. We talked about technology underperforming semiconductors here. They were mostly flat for the week. We can see that momentum shift downward. So we're not seeing a lot of price action there. And then also in that technology area, let's take a look at software stocks. Another general underperformer here, certainly for the last six to eight weeks this group was down almost 1% last week. Now, from here, I do want to share with you a way that you can also stay on top of where that relative strength is. And from my work, I'm going to be very keenly interested in growth names, which will point me toward the NASDAQ composite. So what we are looking at here are the components of that NASDAQ 100 list. This is something you can do quite easily here on stockcharts.com because again, I'm looking at that relative strength indicator descending order. And I want to see within the NASDAQ, where is that strength emanating from? We are seeing those the NASDAQ hit a new high in price. What is driving that? And let's take a look up here at the forefront. Not a whole lot of technology. Now, of course, we'd be remiss to not point out Micron. They came out with fantastic earnings that's prior week into a nice uptrend, which was bullish for select areas of semiconductors. But beyond that, let's just take a quick look at some of these other names up here at the forefront. And you'll see Cintas, which is a uniform company, also Fiserv, which is in the financial space, uh, Copart, which is auto related. And as we move through here, we're also going to see that some consumer staples up here at the forefront. This is Pepsi and KHC. Now this is earnings related, but interesting in the NASDAQ that we are seeing staples up here. Also eBay after reporting their earnings remaining in a nice uptrend. I'm not going to review each name, but I did want to highlight the fact that we're not seeing a lot 
in the way of technology, certainly Google or Alphabet would qualify. But here we are with the utility name AEP and then also EXC are also utility. Now, when you're looking at this, there certainly are 100 names. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom because you want to be aware of where that weakness is in any given index. And in this case, the NASDAQ 100. And let's take a quick look here. What we can see is Adobe is down here. We can also see other software names, Workday, Palo Alto, EA, and Atlassian down here in that weaker quartile. Lulu came out with numbers and it gapped down 18% last week. But as noted, there is strength elsewhere in that retail space. So taking a look here, we've seen where that strength relative to that weakness is in the NASDAQ. Let's go ahead and pop over to the Dow because it was up almost 1% last week. And quite simply, that same exercise, but the Dow is going to point you toward these also larger cap well-known stocks. And I did talk about healthcare on the move higher. Take a look, Merck, MRK, nice base breakout, nice volume, a nice new uptrend shaping up. And this is all about FDA approval, both here in the US and then Keytruda, their cancer drug in the UK. So lots of good news happening there with Merck on that base breakout. Also up here at the forefront, Disney is continuing its nice uptrending price action. This MACD crossover points to the strong possibility of potential further upside with Disney. Also energy, we talked about energy faring well last week, and that is Exxon on the move higher. And one other area with financials, JP Morgan up here at the forefront. Nice confirmed uptrend in the move there. Now, as we move into these weaker areas, taking a quick look, you'll see Apple and Nike, two well-known names, Nike following earnings down here in a confirmed downtrend. And then likewise with Apple, which has been having numerous issues relative to sales in China and then regulation related issues as well. So from here, I did mention that I would share with you a couple of stocks here and in that small cap space. So let's go ahead and take a look at a name that certainly in the past has had its day in the sun, and that is Boot Barn, B-O-T-T. -T. As the name implies, they do specialize in apparel that is going to be Western wear related. But let's take a look at this space breakout because a couple of things happening here in response to this nice advance during Wednesday and Thursday of this past week. A couple of things that you want to be on the lookout for when you are examining base breakouts is, is it taking place on volume? Yes, we did see above average volume and most notable because overall we did not see a whole lot of volume last week in the broader markets. The other factor here is we can see that black line up through the red indicating a new uptrend in this particular name. And then also take a look, the RSI in positive territory. Now from my work, when I'm looking at stocks that could have a potential for a move, I want to see that they have historical precedence. And we can see that the stock in the past has been a certainly an outperformer. And if we pull up a weekly chart here on Boot Barn, you'll also see that on the longer term, this is coming out of that 2020 bear market. This particular name was a very big winner as well. Another name in that small cap space in retail this is a very small company. It's only 500 million. The former name was Torrid. It's now C and it still is, but the ticker symbol is C-U-R-V. And on the lookout for a potential downtrend reversal. Now this is for investors who are not shy about single digit price stocks. I tend to traffic in names that are at least $5 and above. But of note is this move above 
this 50-day simple moving average, and then we have a bullish positive RSI. So we could see a nice potential downtrend reversal here. Not really easy to see, but the volume on this one on Friday was also above average. We've seen this MACD crossover. We're not quite up there in positive territory yet, but certainly of note. Also in that consumer discretionary space, I'm going to share with you a name that I just added to my MEM Edge report last week. This is a smaller home building company, but they have a lot going on by way of growth in their sales. Let's take a look at what compelled me to add it to that list last week. We can see we had that nice base breakout shaping up here, which we did in fact execute last week. And take a look, that MACD in its early stages of an advance, that black line up through the red when it was at it was down here. We are seeing it continue to head higher. And then likewise with that RSI up there in positive territory. Last up in that small cap space, I will share with you a semiconductor stock. Now you don't have the broader group strength behind you, but this is a company certainly at the very least for your watch list. This is Ultra Clean UC. TT, and you can see it's holding up well above its shorter term moving averages. We do have that RSI trending upward, and then that MACD on the cusp of moving this black line up through the red would indicate a new uptrend, which is what occurred back here. But of course, again, the overall backdrop and dynamics within semiconductors are not there at this point in time. That's it for today, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend, and I'm going to look for you here again next Friday.